Hello and welcome to another episode of Arkham Unboxes, the show where we transform games from their box to their unbox state. Today we will be looking at the first ever expansion for the Arkham Horror 3rd edition board game entitled Dead of Night. The first thing to notice is it has some strange packaging. It comes in a cute little box that is approximately the same size as the deluxe expansions for the card game. It arrived shrink wrapped so let's cut that off and get inside. We are using a serrated dinner knife rather than a sharp knife and that works just fine. Remember, if you cut out the bottom square then you can use sticky tape to affix the shrink wrap around the lid and this will prolong the life of your box, protect it from spills and keep it pristine should one day you decide to sell it. Taking off the lid we see a single page incredibly square rule sheet. Then a large ziplock bag containing four, yes four, brand new investigators plus two original adventures. Below this is a sealed pack with two different sized punch boards. Next is a ziplock bag with all the mini sized cards. A larger bag with some medium sized cards. And another bag with more medium sized cards. Finally some additional plastic stands. Like regular sized game boxes there is a cardboard insert which looks so tiny and wee we think the pixies must have given it to us. And there is no hidden surprise underneath. So thanks very much for watching everyone, that concludes this internet unboxing video. Or at least it would if we weren't the Arkham Chronicle. Aside from being super kawaii due to its size, this isn't a flimsy disposable affair. It is the same rigid card that all the FFG core boxes are made from and it has the non-slip textured linen finish too which is great if new releases give you sweaty palms. The insert is also a thick card monochrome printed item, but unfortunately due to the size it is the only FFG insert that gives you less room in the box if you flip it over, with barely enough room for the mini cards let alone the full size ones, which are obviously too tall to stand up on their side either. For this reason it may end up as a casualty in the recycling. You can certainly keep the two products separate if you wish or figure out a plan of what to store in this box and what goes in the main box. If you are investing in third party tokens for example you could put them in here or put those in the main box and keep any components you no longer use in here because you've upgraded your dice for example. An interesting note is that this box is the exact size for all of the neighborhood boards and to cram in the street sections, but make sure you don't leave it at home when taking it to a game night or you'll be screwed. This fun fact should give hope to anyone wanting a Dunwich or Innsmouth add-on with new game boards. Did you see the traditional one year late catalogue? No we didn't either, which is great news for any gamer that wants FFG to either save money or trees. On the sides of the bottom half of the box are handy pictures of other Arkham Files games with way more expansions than this one, which you might think a bit cheeky, but to be honest when was the last time you stared lovingly at that beautiful artwork on your box sides. Again, fair play to FFG for reducing the amount of paper used by compacting everything onto a single sheet, which begins with a petite but evocative story snippet leading on to an overview of what this expansion delivers. Then there is a close up of the expansion icon. All the cards in here, even the scenario and new investigators have this symbol on them to allow you to separate out or just easily locate those components from this product. Next is a component list, so if you do want to reset everything or get the sneaky suspicion something is missing, then you can double check here. Finally, if you still need to be told not to shuffle your event decks and your location decks together, there is a handy prompt on how this box should be integrated with the base game. And just like every Arkham Files game, the expansions use content from the core box in their scenarios. Over the page are a couple of rules reminders to try and stop you bothering customer service or looking silly when posting on the internet. And we finish up with an extensive credits and playtester list which definitely isn't a racket to smuggle out free games to FFG employees significant others. You can also download the rules as a PDF document from the rules section of the Arkham Horror page on the FFG website. On the smaller of your punch boards are the four new investigator tokens and seven additional clue and doom tokens. 
FFG would probably have liked to have included more of these tokens in the core box, as remember how the rules reference told you you had to proxy when you ran out, but there simply wasn't enough room on the original token sheets. Which is probably why they introduced the new multiple clue doom tokens on the larger sheet. With confirmation that the elite ability is cumulative, you can now have monsters with some very large health tokens in a six player game, and this makes things more convenient for everyone. Although you will probably use the doom side more frequently than the clue side. They are larger and have the numeral as well as these weird lines and shading. There are 8 of these, adding an additional 24 clues doom, plus the 7 singles for a total of 31, clearly signifying the shit is about to hit the fan. Also on the sheet is the 5 part monster deck holder, another item that was probably left out from the original box for budgetary reasons. It fits together in the same way as the event deck holder, so you shouldn't have any trouble, but we do have a video to help you out, with special guest. Unfortunately a design failure means you either get to have a blank side facing out which looks terrible or the peak on the wrong side, which whilst it matches the curves of the original holder makes it harder to draw as both it and the cards are much smaller. Experiment to see which way you prefer. There are 4 new plastic stands to match your 4 new investigators. Thankfully this is something they didn't skimp on, so you are still only 6 stands short from the core box. But just as they addressed the missing monster deck holder, they could have corrected this now. Even if they included just 2 extra stands in each expansion by the time the third one arrived, you would have caught up. There are 2 brand new scenarios, one with traditional great old one, or to be pedantic, regular great old one, Sothogwa. Known for his great girth and his bat like furriness. The other has a more down to earth beginning, with the war between the Sheldon and O'Bannon organised crime gangs. The Arkham Files world that FFG created makes the 1920 setting more of a feature than just a period background. Both of these benefit from new cards for the anomalies, event decks, archive cards, and more monsters. So many more new monsters. Almost as exciting are 4 extra investigators, including one of our favourites. From the top we have Diana Stanley the Redeemed Cultist, Kate Winthrop the Scientist, Federal Agent and Arkham Chronicle favourite Roland Banks, and ex-convict Skids O'Toole. If you are joining us from the living card game then Kate Winthrop the Scientist will be new to you. Well, sort of. Oh and in this world Skids is a rogue survivor, not a rogue guardian. Their health and sanity all adds up to 12, and the sum of their skills is 13, reminiscent of their core box counterparts. There is no Ashcan Pete, the promo character from Arkham Knight 2018, and we understand he is planned for release in the Under Dark Waves expansion. Every investigator comes with 3 starting cards, plus Skids has his own special set of wanted condition cards, which may be brought into play by his Light Fingers ability. And that's not it for the mini cards, there are 4 allies, 4 items, and 4 spells. It is sad to say it looks like we won't see Alyssa Graham as an ally as her art appears on the clairvoyance spell card. On top of this are 28 new special cards which we won't reveal for spoiler reasons. All the existing decks get a boost with 7 new headline cards and 72 new encounter cards breaking down to 8 for each neighbourhood including the streets. And we already mentioned the adventure specific cards. On the rear of the box it lists the sleeve quantities, sadly in the now out of print FFG sleeves, but their direct replacements from Game Genic should suffice. Or pick whatever you like, you will need 159 standard American board game size for the regular cards, and 80 mini American board game size for the smaller ones. That is pretty much everything, apart from the 5 separate Ziploc bags they supplied to help you store all your new goodies. Before you go, please do consider leaving a thumbs up on the video, or checking out our literally hundreds of other Arkham Horror videos. Why not like and share this video to help more people find it? And if you do want to see more videos from us, you can always support our work over on Patreon.
regular old one, Sokogwa. Wow.